más. Let's check it out. And there we are. Nice. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. And today is June 7th, 2019. And this stream is a drop in math tutoring session number 31. Basically, let's do some math and open discussion. And that's basically the intro. Uh, we've done a few of these, as you can tell, with the numbering system. Uh, we've probably done more than 31, but I wasn't calling them drop in math tutoring sessions before. It's just let's do some math, open discussion. Uh, but officially, number 31. Maybe up to 40 or 45. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the end of the year right now. So there's a lot of... Uh, uh, I'm personally busy uh, with a lot of students and uh, I expect there's people that do need uh, some help so I'm here basically uh, putting aside a couple hours uh, for anyone that does need help with mathematics usually the conversation we try to focus it on math uh, but it is an open discussion we can go you know roam around and talk about different things uh, we've done a lot of physics on these streams um, I haven't done too much to chemistry uh, we've talked a little bit about astronomy uh, biology and uh, a few different things obviously some current events and politics comes up but we are holding a live stream tomorrow at 7 30 a.m pdt pacific coast uh, west coast canada my time at 7 30 a.m so uh if you're want to talk politics current events news and stuff tomorrow's stream is probably a better place to be than here because math takes center stage in these streams and if we're talking about anything that uh, is not math related or if it, even if it's math related and if you have a question regarding uh, mathematics just ask the question and hopefully i'll catch it in chat and what we've been doing is creating a list here on this side and you know taking things off as we deal with them okay uh aside from that welcome to the stream uh i hope you're having a fantastic friday and uh, what we're gonna do is just you know wait until uh, people start rolling in so usually it takes a few minutes lord how are you doing good evening to you good evening to you for me it's afternoon and the sun is coming up now it was all cloudy overcast and we might get sunned out uh, the sun is coming through the skylight i think we've got an hour until the sun hits here and it gets really bright so hopefully it's not going to interfere with us riding on the board i should have timed this uh, better hey chicho Hannah says we have an outage at work so we are all bored ah oh, nice well i don't know if it's nice or not but uh uh hope glad to be doing a stream when you're bored at work so you can just chill uh belgium had a little storm too still warm though uh, warm though uh, nice yeah here the weather is crazy here uh hannah is probably getting the same thing it's like windy cold rainy super hot and sunny like august temperatures and then goes cold again so it is what it is right the chaos of weather the chaos of weather it's uh, i'm glad summer's coming though i'm glad spring is here i'm glad summer's coming uh, and just like all of my students i'm glad the school year is ending because everyone's prepping for the finals and stuff like this so everyone's putting a lot of time in we are sending rain uh showers your wages are you yeah we had it uh, earlier today uh and last night as well I guess it's coming again. It's supposed to be coming. It wasn't even supposed to be sunny today. Man, I love spring. Probably favorite time of the year. Yeah. I like I like fall too. I like all seasons really. Uh for me, uh spring and summer. I love summer. I like warm temperatures personally. I really like warm temperatures. Rendell, how are you doing? Good morning, afternoon and evening. And yes, yes, yes. Very heavy rains. Okay, gang, if it we get a very heavy rains coming up from Hannah's part of the world. Power goes out. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Great lasagna. How's life? 
doing good man doing good been crazy busy I start I shot a video yesterday a comic book haul and I'm gonna try to edit it later on today and tomorrow if I don't if I can't get it edited in the next couple of days and processed and loaded up then it's gonna be a week delay before <laughs> I'm able to get it up online I hate winter it's too cold and dark uh, winter winter can have us fun things winter is amazing too for me I get a lot of work done in the winter just back end and stuff and I I do a lot of marathon watches on different things that I've been meaning to watch so I don't mind winter but in our part of the world me and Hannah Hannah's from Seattle I'm in Vancouver uh, we get a lot of rain like it's crazy rainy it's like uh, what do you call a temperate rainforest where we are so a lot of people move here in the summertime they come and see it in the summer and they go oh this is beautiful beautiful oh my god so nice and they decide to move here and the winter kills them they don't realize that more than 50 percent of the of the days in vancouver anyway it rains like it rains i forget what it is like two-thirds of the year or something overcast a lot chicho is a random question but did you ever consider having na and come to europe I don't know what NA is uh, consider leaving North America oh, having NA leaving North America and coming to Europe uh, index how you doing welcome welcome uh, you know what Lord I went to Europe in 1998 right and I tracked around it was beautiful love the diversity love the people but I found Europe to be a little claustrophobic uh, I found rampant racism in Europe really there, there was tremendous amount of racism in Europe at the time did I have a beard I don't remember if I had a beard but I did have facial hair and I was dark you know I think it was after the I went there in the fall end of summer fall uh, I love Hennessy I love Hennessy too and I had really dark skin so I was trekking around in different countries I was getting nailed by police just random passport checks right and then they would look at me and they'd be amazed that i was canadian then they go canada and then they hold me question me for a bit and they let me go and uh, i didn't mind europe there's certain parts of europe i really liked uh, i loved greece i loved ireland i loved budapest budapest was amazing i loved southern spain alicante and and that area uh, and I spent two and a half months three months trekking around Europe uh, it was fun it was fun I like Berlin uh, Berlin was fun uh, just a little raw it was good uh, I love all seasons I'm from Sweden <laughs> yeah Sweden Swedish winters must be hard 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 yeah I can't deny the fact that racism still is very active in Europe for example the n-word is still very acceptable here really for ex for example at least in my area of europe wow wow sipping captain jack this weekend <laughs> nice. captain that's a lot of sugar i think Anna. that's a lot of sugar um one thing i found in europe too that i really i it was the the alcohol the drinking was over the top in europe for me like like I've gone through periods where I drink a lot and I don't drink a lot and right now I'm not drinking very much back then I was in 98 or so right but I found it crazy that beer wine spirits not so much but beer and wine were daily activities of a lot of people so I found a huge chunk of Europe to be functioning alcoholics and that to me was just exhausting uh, even though I had amazing times uh, doing uh, you know partying and drinking with friends and stuff uh, so alcohol was insane what's on tap this weekend for you Chicho any uh, any hikes I'm gonna be I'm busy with my students man I'm gonna be this weekend uh, like last couple of weeks three weeks or so uh, it's been mainly four weeks or so it's been mainly focused on doing uh, dealing with students doing these live streams I haven't done too many videos where I'm shooting and editing 
uh, because I've been crazy busy. But this weekend is just work for me. For the next week, couple of weeks, it's just work, uh, which is basically uh, I'm going to do editing. I'm going to work with my students and do some back end stuff. Uh, yeah, we love our alcohol. Even I do. I guess it's part of our culture. Beer, for sure. Living in Belgium. Yeah, so much beer. Racist stuff in EU at the moment seems very bad you're right even back then for me it was it was insane like there was racism that you would have encountered in north america or canada my part of the world like 20 years before and it, i was encountering again like in 98 in europe i was like wow we even have something called aperitifich which pretty much means uh, drinking alcohol before um, aperitif aperitif I think they call it in French no and most traditional households in Belgium do this yeah I I don't mind a little bit and stuff it's the excessive beer drinking and I I took part in that like I went to Ireland and I loved Ireland but Irish food at the time was so heavy same with Czech like I went to Prague and uh, like the food was so heavy that I found myself drinking so I wouldn't have to eat. <laughs> Mask of Raven, how are you doing? Apertif, yeah. And we do have, uh, uh, Armenians have it as well, uh, uh, like pre food little drinks and after food for sure, right? People don't even notice regarding the racist stuff, yeah. You notice when you're coming outside of from outside of Europe if especially from where I am not that there isn't racism in Canada there's tremendous amount of racism in Canada right I've encountered it huge I've been in fights because of it in my younger days right uh, but in Europe it was cultural it wasn't it was within the society it wasn't a random anomaly racist person you met it was it was a core identity of some of the some of the areas i was in it was very weird people hate others because they have different color skin sad very sad or different religion or different eye color or different different anything right and i think that's one of the reasons i mean if you think about it europe has started two world wars right like crazy and in europe the, their countries that are very small so they have to fight off invasions and there's a lot of a lot of history in Europe and a lot of violent history in Europe also every Friday all students and working class people go to cafes and bars clubs to drink yeah here is the same I don't know if it's everyone one of the things in Canada alcohol is pretty expensive here so students there's a lot of binge drinking in Canada like tremendous amount of binge drinking in Canada as there i found there was in europe as well uh, and i participated in that but after a certain point you just get exhausted and it's very bad for for your health right lucky for me you know i'm in part of the world where cannabis uh, was accepted so cannabis consumption uh, is a huge chunk of people if they want stress relief and stuff like this instead of drinking uh, cannabis uh, they partake in I think it's more a cultural uh, dissonance or however you want to call it yeah yeah European average European people don't really like outsiders it's a harsh truth yeah. for me it was weird it was weird encountering it because I grew up here and I encountered racism in Canada uh, a lot uh, well I've gone through phases it goes through phases depending on what the uh, corporate propaganda mainstream machine is doing right getting people all stirred up and war rhetoric and stuff like this uh, but uh, <laughs> right, um, but the racism in large part is in the subculture now it's not prevalent everywhere 
not even about skin color i would say it seems more nationalism like my country is the best above everything else yeah that's what i encountered in europe mainly but chicho is not even against just different looking people also against fellow white people for example belgian people are really harsh against french people yeah it, it was it was crazy like like for me uh, let me tell you a story about ireland right i was in belfast i made an intention to go about there's a video i plan on making as an intro by the way if anybody has any math questions uh, please post it and we'll do math but because i've been teaching a lot of mathematics just reviewing cramming i don't have anything planned out to do i'm just making myself available so just so you know if you have a math question we'll deal with it right away we'll stop all, all conversation right but just to give you just give you an example so the conversation is here uh, but both uh, speak French for me they are all the same same with me I treated everyone the same but I didn't really realize that I couldn't even tell the difference between the different beliefs I want to use uh, medicinal marijuana however I am afraid because I don't know what I am putting in my body and I don't know how uh, I will react uh, research earwit is amazing uh, for research uh, and there's a lot more news and information available and Hannah you're in Seattle Washington so there should be a lot of resources available to you not true the north of Belgium speaks Dutch the south speaks French define medical marijuana and is medical marijuana only uh, it's a good question uh, blueberry hello blueberry how are you doing it's a great question to find medical marijuana uh, like a lot of people self-medicate you don't want to be in a centralized system the database right because that database is shared within different countries gets hacked and stuff like this so a lot of people self-medicate without a doctor's note uh, which is a legit thing to do as far as I'm concerned is okay most people don't know most people don't know do, 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 do. most people don't. so uh the story about belfast so i went to ireland and i really wanted to visit ireland in the night in 98 okay and during that time when i was there there was still a little bit of uh, flare-ups in northern ireland okay uh, but i wanted to go to belfast so i went to belfast i want to use it for my own uh medicinal purposes to relax and chill liquor is also medicinal i self-medicate with it yeah i agree liquor uh, alcohol can be medicinal as well it's just a binge drinking aspect of it and everyday drinking andy how are you doing how's life and uh, everyday drinking is too much like if you're drinking two to three beers a day your liver is uh receiving it as if you're an alcoholic so you're doing a tremendous amount of damage to your liver if you're drinking two to three beers a day two to three drinks a day okay i know this because i know people in the medical industry and, uh, i've done a fair bit of research into this okay so you definitely don't want to be drinking you know you say oh i don't i don't drink too much i'm a moderate drinker i drink two to three beers a day you're doing the same damage as an alcoholic is doing maybe a little bit you know well a little bit relative to hardcore alcohols are drinking a 26 or a day but you're still doing a tremendous amount of damage to your liver and kidneys and stuff like this here's my suggestion clear your mind for negativity get a joint and maximize smoke half a joint and you don't need uh, blueberry good recommendation and Hannah like people assume you have to smoke a joint or you have to you know consume a lot or hit a bong bowl or something like this you don't right you could use cbd oil you could use stuff that's not 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 thc you could just take one vap pull right or one puff okay i only drink one to two a week only only two to three drinks max good i binge once a month some months i take off good well the binge <laughs> you know north america the teenage binge drinking is insane and the youth 20s good for me i don't drink yeah very good you're saving your internals but in the long run it's better not to uh, 
unless you I can't say it because you, you can you can use it for relaxing right stress is the number one killer in the world number one cause of cancer and destructive behavior and stuff so it's okay to relieve your stress with certain foods and drinks right so you have to balance personally I am in person uh, personally a very stress anxious person also a very bad sleeper medical marijuana really helped me with that more dead people because alcohol as with other drugs together yeah alcohol is crazy very destructive I binge drink beer all the time mainly because beer is 3.2 percent alcohol here where is that uh, Utah I'm assuming US in Canada beer is between rounding rounding up between five to six and a half seven percent okay four and a half let's say four and a half to seven and a half percent in Canada we in general in back in the day we used to call American beer piss water <laughs> right you could like Canadian drinkers could drink American drinkers under the table really I've done it multiple times right because Ca Canadian beer is stronger percentage right and whenever you drank American beer you just keep on drinking nothing would happen for the first time ever I'm experiencing being flat broke it sucks yeah however blueberry if you're flat broke adjust your spending habits I've gone through multiple phases of being flat broke right now I'm on the boundary <laughs> really right now right I'm, I owe, I owe someone a little bit of money that I need to pay back okay so that's what I'm working on paying them back not much right I don't like to be in debt but I'm pretty much flat broke right now but since I've gone through multiple phases of being flat broke and having very being very very flush like really I go through waves of it right uh, over the years I've adjusted my spending habit and I've learned how to do things that bring me a tremendous amount of joy when I don't have money okay walks reading some of my comic book collection writing creating content uh, getting in touch with some old friends uh, catching up on news binge watching uh, TV shows or movies I've been meaning to do uh, just every, going fruit picking and uh, you know going to swimming in the summer lake jumping and stuff like this how many more years until it's federally legal uh, good question I want to buy at the grocery store Anna you're in Washington you should be able to buy at designated places but federally federal government United States I don't know Canada federally is legal now so in Canada we're good to go <laughs> but light is piss water it's piss water <laughs> two point three point two beers uh, uh, specifically a Utah thing in most states it's like uh, five or six percent okay okay beer in Germany I better don't say anything about it yeah German beers there's amazing beers in Europe yo Dante how's life how you doing welcome welcome what are we talking we're talking about drinking on a math stream <laughs> the beach is free the beach is free I spent Anna and blueberry I have spent many 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 hours on the beach reading writing note-taking organizing I do a lot of work at the beach I tell people that's one of my office locations index Chicho I'm living in Washington DC working for the government for the summer I know I know but my internet at my apartment isn't great so I'm not sure how much I'll be able to watch your stream for the next few months no worries index thanks for your heads up okay I just want to say hi and let you know I'm still around okay thank you very much for the heads up and I hope you enjoy Washington DC and I I hope you don't get in trouble working for the government right I there's some I'm guessing there's some really really nasty people in in that area right 
so i hope you enjoy your stay there and get a lot of experience and build up your connections and no worries about being able to pop in or or not uh, i know you've made it pretty clear you're going to be around for a while man thank you appreciate it very much very much the support is phenomenal brother phenomenal brother uh, thank you for that thank you for that rep pop up you can't smoke if you work for the government in the federal for the federal government no in canada you can uh, because it would go against if it's legal it would go against uh, uh, your rights if you can't uh, if you can't smoke so i don't know what it is yeah in u.s yeah in u.s federal government no uh, i don't think so uh, and it's weird because the federal government likes to pass laws where corporations can test you for drugs and stuff like this right but i last i checked the u.s government federal government uh, people in congress and stuff they never get tested for anything all right not that they should no one should at the same time it's nice to be able to sit beer all day on the weekend without getting super drunk it is it is uh, i don't really drink many hours at the beach high as kites oh yeah just in the u.s well you can't smoke at work that's for sure yeah it's just like you can't drink at work if you're definitely if you're operating anything uh, you know you, you got to be mindful but in private i don't think anyone can touch you if uh, usually uh, if uh, it's legal yeah if you're clever you can get away with the CBD is uh, usually okay like I've known people in Canada one thing that happens in the in the factories and the tar sands and in different industries and stuff like this there's a lot of um, what do you call it places where people work uh, camps and stuff like this or even if they live off-site and they go um, they do drug testing right but there's things you can buy to filter out uh your your piss basically so you know they go on a little they don't smoke or consume for a day or two and then they drink this thing really fast and they piss it out and filters it out and it's just all ridiculous really canada for germans are like friendly americans <laughs> like not the crazy ones <laughs> thanks for the trust i guess there's a lot of Can crazy canadians around i can tell you that but technically the feds could raid legal dispensaries at any time yeah and they've gone uh, utah you're correct and they've they're going after people who are doing things that are legal in the state that they're in but federally they're illegal and one of the things they're doing they're going after people that uh, are politically active right weird I smoke at work manual labor sucks my tolerance is very high though yeah one thing you can do uh, rare purple is uh, just stop consuming for a while go on a sabbatical right which is something really good to do if you're if you're ever find if you ever find yourself that you're addicted to a drink or food or some kind of medication or anything like this like really even coffee or tea go on a break take a break right don't become addicted to anything addiction is one of the most destructive forces in the western world maybe food alcohol drugs gambling sex anything people here like get addicted to so many things it's insane in gaming whatever it might be if you find that you're addicted to something where your passion for whatever it is that you're doing is interfering with your relationships with your work with your life stop doing what it is that you're doing take a break from it get your life in order and then you can do it in moderation if you can handle that if you can't stop it permanently a lot of the biggest white nationalist names are from canada are they i didn't know that Chicho, can one smoke too much med uh, medicinal marijuana? Uh, 
I, I like calling it cannabis, Hannah, because marijuana, I found this out a while ago, but marijuana was a derogatory term that the federal, U.S. federal government, the uh, FBI, I believe, or the, I believe it was the FBI that came up with, uh, or at the time, whatever it was called, uh, I think it was the FBI, uh, that they came up with to uh, make, make people think that marijuana was something different than cannabis, because cannabis everyone knew what it was hemp and cannabis and stuff like this so they needed to name it something uh, to make people be okay with criminalizing it this is just crazy uh, wordplay right the war of words uh, in terms of can you can you consume too much cannabis it'll never kill you okay uh, it, the level that kills you is basically lack of oxygen like you're consuming too much burnt matter so you, you die because you're not breathing right mm -hmm. uh, but I've seen people that have consumed cannabis where it was too much for them and they need to sit down in a corner or they get a little sick and they vomit right so everyone to their own means right to their own uh, tolerance right some people are allergic to strawberries if they eat a strawberry they die some people can sit down and eat a bowl of strawberries right if you find out a certain food does not agree with you don't consume it it's not good for you your body's saying no period so Canada definitely has crazies Canada definitely has crazies 100% I've come across a few of them myself true I stop a few times a year when I travel with family good good I take uh, tolerance breaks from alcohol and coffee from time to time. If you use it every day, it begins to lose its effect unless you keep taking more and more. Yeah, which is part of the problem with many things. Addiction can be very complicated, but you're right. Yeah, addiction is complicated, very complicated. Um, there's multiple causes for addiction. Trauma is one of the main uh or reasons why people get addicted to different things and stress is one reason and, and whatnot but in general if, for me anyway for my life anyway if i find that that i'm i get addicted to anything i cut back on that thing even if it, it becomes difficult for me to do so right even if it becomes difficult for me to do so okay i'm gonna stand stretch a little instead of sitting on the stool right i guess people must be busy studying it's uh it's weird because my students are in panic mode some of them uh some new students have gotten where we're trying to get them to a, a reasonable mark or a passing grade where we're doing a lot of work trying to get them to that level right so that's what i'm doing right now with mathematics so I'm assuming right now we got no one on the stream which is desperate to uh, do some cram sessions uh, for their math right which is funny which is funny which is uh, like for my students next week the final exam start in two weeks and three weeks so in the next three weeks they have a lot of exams right that's crazy I'm ready for math me too I could teach some stuff but depends what you guys uh, if there's any questions if there isn't we could do something what should we do what have I been doing with my students find the minimum value of this <laughs> that guy we could mask with Raymond sure let's do a quadratic quadratic is one of the main ones right so we got this x squared plus 2x uh, plus 2x minus 4 right? plus 2x minus 4 and f of x and if we're talking about minimum it this is a quadratic as a parabola so this thing opens up because the number in front here is positive is positive one right so the parabola looks like this uh this is going to have x intercepts for sure so it'll look like this something like that right so minimum means we want to find the lowest point basically the vertex of the parabola so you got to complete the square to this you got to make sure the x squared is by its x squared is a one in front only and it is so all you got to do is just take this guy divide it by two you get one square this thing you get one 
and then you sub that back in inside the brackets, right? So you're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1 minus 4. Grab this 2, I keep bringing it out, becomes minus 1. So this factor is that guy. Two numbers that multiply to give you 1, add to give you 2. 1 and 1. So this becomes x plus 1 squared minus 5. So the minimum is negative 5, right? So the vertex of this thing would be 1 and negative 1 and negative 5. So we're actually on this side, right? The y intercept is negative 4. And that was 1, negative 1 and negative 5. This was 0 and f negative 4. And the axis of symmetry is this two, so you go one more over. So this would be negative 2 and negative 4. And you can graph your problem, and it goes like this. So the minimum is negative 5, right? Like this is Speedy Gonzalez style. This is grade 11 mathematics in my part of the world. Which equation mirrors the female menstruation cycle? I think you made a video, but it's been a few years since I have watched this. I don't know what the equation is, but we can draw it. Ah, you're a mathematics teacher. I'm a math tutor, right? I, I, I guess I teach. You can call it teaching, but I, I don't. I think the word teacher has means you're certified to be teaching in a centralized institution. Is it, is educated probably? I don't know. I teach mathematics. I teach mathematics. The female menstrual cycle. Let's do Chicho female menstrual cycle. Let me let me find you the video that Hannah is referring to. It's a great video. I love it. Chicho menstrual cycle video. Here's the link to the female menstrual cycle. Right, menstruation, ovulation. Let's put this on here. Fun. Here is Chicho the Chicho. Maybe I'll start using that. Chicho the Chicho. So that's the ovulation. So basically, the I, the reason I did that is because, really, as males, I'm assuming there's a lot of us that are male here right not female i guess i don't know we don't menstruate right one thing i highly recommend have an appreciation for what women females go through okay for me i really didn't have an appreciation for this and i mentioned this in this video that i linked right for me i really didn't have an appreciation for this until i graphically it was like wow right or thinking about in the math lens of mathematics where you see a cycle going through right so basically the graph is this right you have a very general <laughs> did the research for this for that video i'm going by memory this is the graph that i have in mind right i just looked up the problem you saw i don't know there was a formula for quadratic functions yeah literally never learned this in school you never learned that in school the an x is equal to negative e plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 is equal to 2a that's for the x-intercepts but completing the square that had to be that had to be part of it no but the female menstrual cycle is this right there's menstruation and then ovulation right so it goes something like this and this is a 20 i made my graphs a little bit too thick i never understood this stuff until i start dating how complicated the female organs are yeah it is crazy they are so complicated so much they have to do to take care of themselves yeah no i learned some calculus but not this wow dante that's crazy they didn't teach you that stuff that's like core essential dante you're you're canadian no you're, you're Canada, Ontario, I believe. They didn't teach this to you guys in Ontario? So here's menstruation. Let's do this. And then ovulation. Right? Again, this is brutal gra graph. I have to look at the graph to make sure I know what it is. And this cycle, 
uh, let's call the whole cycle 28 days would it go uh, hold on let me draw this properly even better right hold on a second so then you would have this right and then you would have menstruation again and so on right so from here to here would be the one period period right so if this is menstruation so if this is menstruation menstruation this is ovulation ovulation <laughs> i don't know how to spell it and then this one would be menstruation again right so the period from here to here is 28 days and it goes through the moon cycle right so that's why there's a lot of people that say the year should be broken up into 13 months instead of 12 months with the days changing between the months right you could make it 13 28 days and then every four years or something you adjust the time a little bit and it works itself out so it's the lunar calendar right so female menstrual cycle goes through the lunar calendar right menstruation is when they're shedding uh, the lining and uh, I, you know the, the ovaries this the uh, the the eggs right what does the y-axis this one would be intensity right intensity we call this intensity in the graph that we made right intensity meaning when your menstruation is in peak so this period this the period is 28 days right where you go through it again the cycle begins again right this thing this menstruation this thing varies from female to female okay on average is about five days long right so when they when the bleeding starts a little bit of bleeding starts you can count that as day one and in day five you're getting your last bleeding usually in day two and day three is the heaviest bleeding right and again i'm a guy i i just know this because for the graph and girlfriends female friends that i've had and i've made it uh i sort of spent a little bit of time to really appreciate what it is that they are going through because as males we don't go through this and there's chemicals being released in their bodies right hardcore and ovulation this is when the eggs are forming and it's going through the whole thing going through tubes and coming out and in the lining is like really i don't know the terminology i just know this is where they're making it this is when they're shedding it right if you want to think about it some people actually calculate this now what is that the, the, the semi semantic scholar oh i'm not gonna link i'm not gonna click on that uh, dante just because it's a pdf i don't want it to lock up anything sometimes pdf lock things up okay so this is intensity so in day two and three you would have the most bleeding right and there's cramps and like literally there's so many chemicals going through their bodies and there's a lot of women that have uh, iron deficiency because they're bleeding right so there's a lot of women that take iron pills to get their irons back up again and stuff like this so there's huge huge things going on and if you so if this is 28 days and if you extend this to a whole year right you basically get 13 of those cycles 13 of these guys right back to back right so you basically see this and this and and one is menstruation one is ovulation right so this would be one and then two, two, two. so you get 28 uh sorry um 13 periods in a year right so 13 times in a year there's serious release chemicals being released they have to deal with things heavy heavy they made a model for the menstrual cycle it, they, there's a model there's actually a function for the menstrual cycle i gotta click on that PC. <laughs> i'm gonna click on it if we lose the stream gang i'm gonna come back right away okay let's see what we get a mathematical model for the human menstrual cycle ah sweet let's check this out when did this come out 2013 
when did I put up my video? I don't know when I put up my video. I forget when I put up my video. Oh, where's my... When did we put up my video? Boop. I put this out in 2012. I didn't... I haven't seen this one. Abstract. Do we read this? The abstract says this. A simple mathematical model framework is developed to describe the hormonal uh, interaction of the human menstrual cycle along the hypothalamus pituitary ovaries axis. The framework is designed so that it can be readily extended to model processes that disrupt the normal functioning cycle. The model in its most basic formation exhibits multiple periodic solutions one of which shows the key characteristics of a menstrual cycle whilst the other indicate possible abnormalities sometimes observed in women of reproductive age the basic model is extended to encompass receptor down regulation uh, regulation as a mechanism to describe the desensitization of the pituitary to continuous simultaneous I don't know so I'm gonna keep on I'm gonna look for the graphs I want to see the graphs is there graphs oh there's this and then there's the there's little uh, charts oh look at that look at the formulas cool cool oh look at that there's the graphs I love the graphs look at that so if you go to page eight, you see the graphs, right? That's cool. 128 days. There's two cycles. So they graphed it. LH E2. So we'd have to find out what the axes are they're talking about. Uh, so these must be these are the chemical releases. Yeah, I looked at some of the stuff when I was doing the video. They're so crazy graphs as well but they didn't find any mathematical equations for it it was mainly describing what they were and the different chemicals being released this is cool it's like a heartbeat eh? the heartbeat is a crazy trick uh, trick function that's cool look at that it looks like a heartbeat wow look at that they got tables and references that's cool i'm going to bookmark this Boop. Let's do this. Tags. Female. Men's. Draw. Cycle. Math. <laughs> Thanks for that. Sorry, gang. When I find stuff like this, I like to. Uh, what do you call it? Graph data. I like to bookmark these things. Uh, oh, it's not bookmarking. It was a PDF. Son of a. I gotta grab it another time. My bookmark thing, Dingo doesn't, uh, Diggy, whatever it is, the Jingo doesn't uh, do it. Okay. Samuel, I don't know what that word means, brother. I never understood this until I started dating. How complicated the female word is. Oh, I read that, okay. So I should calculate this, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So it's, it is complicated, and the chemistry, the biology of this. Like, I've seen graphs of this when I was doing this stuff, and I embedded some of those graphs in that video where there's different color tones for the different chemicals being released and stuff. And there's pain associated with this as well, right? So every 28 days, some, some, some uh, women don't go through it, some do, right? Where the pain and the bloating and the exhaustion it's just the headaches it's pretty intense man i don't think uh, as uh, as males we really fully appreciate what women go through uh, which is um, our loss really because we don't have a, as deep a connection with our bodies as women do to a certain degree right But once you learn it, it is brilliant. Once you learn it, you cannot unlearn it. That's the beauty of it, right? Once you learn, you cannot unlearn, which is fantastic in my opinion. 
really learn it right you can make it a part of your life and incorporate it into your life uh, for good right for good so that's one math what else am i doing i've been doing what with my students we're all over the place with my students so uh, what am i doing uh, da, 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 that's everywhere we're everywhere with it there's definitely a lot of quadratic stuff uh logs there is uh right now i just have one grade 12 student so the grade 12 stuff is uh, uh i'm not as actively there are years where i have a lot of grade 12 students and some years where this is one of the few years where i only have one usually I have two or three or four sometimes um i mean there's there's square root stuff going on like just preliminary stuff right um, it's one place where a lot of people lack how to do things like for example one thing i ask my students in general you need to know how to do is something like this right 27 to the power of negative 2 over 3 right i ask people how to do this majority of people have no idea how to do this right even though they teach this in grade 9 grade 10 heavy right and the solution to this is basically you have to appreciate that a radical right whatever the number is on the radical that's equivalent to writing whatever this is and this goes in a denominator in the power right so radicals are really powers but the denominator of the power so all you can do is bring this to the radical and go cube root of 27 to the power of negative 2 cube root of 27 is just 3 right you're looking for triplets so you go 3 times 9 3 times 3 so three threes can come out of that thing as one three because the number here basically means as many many uh clones as you have of this you can bring them out as one thing so this thing basically comes out as three and it's power of negative two negative power it does things anything to the power does things to this base number it doesn't directly interact with it so negative power what it implies you flip the base number so this becomes 1 over 3 squared, which is equal to 1 over 9, right? So there's some of the stuff I do with students just to give them refreshers, remind them of how to do these things. Pretty important, really important, really. And these are just uh, exponential and radical. And one way, uh, one of the things you get from radicals, uh, the function anyway, for people, if you got f of x is equal to x squared, right? That's a parabola, right? That looks like this. Okay. And the radical functions, basically, we get by taking the inverse of the switch. X with Y. So if we take a function like this and say, hey, what's this function going to look like if we flip it over to the line Y equals X? That's the line Y equals X. Right? You're using that as a mirror, you go doo -doo, right? So this thing goes right, goes like that. So the graph is gonna look like this, right? The line y is equal to x at the point one one that stays where it is, right? So here's a point one one, so the graph looks like this, right? Now if you're gonna call this a function, you can't have both the top and the bottom of this thing because that's a relation. That's what it looks like visually, you're flipping it. But what you're really concerned about is just either the top part of it or the bottom part so you can kill this right so radical function looks like this algebraically it's this you switch these guys around so this becomes x is equal to y squared right and what that's done is switch the x and the y which means you're flipping along the line y is equal to x and then you got to get isolate y because that's your function right so you take the square root of both sides so y is equal to square root of x so what y, y is equal to x squared looks like that y is equal to square root of x looks like this which is half the parabola that's actually this guy here that guy graphed there right so that's what a radical is is related to the exponent to a certain degree right to the power okay 
But the first thing they do, they don't teach you this in grade 8, 9, 10, right? They teach it to you in grade 11, but you've already done, dealt a lot with the radicals, right? So anything to the power, here, let's do a large one. Let's say you're going to take the fifth power or fifth root of uh, 64, x to the power of 6, y to the power of 7, z to the power of 10 over the fifth root. Okay, let's make this 9, w, 5, q, 7, right? So you can break down 64. Here, let's do this up here. So if you're going to break down 64, 64 is 8 times 8, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. And we're looking for the fifth root of 64, right? Means you're looking for five of a kind. So you can grab these five five twos you can bring them outside the radical symbol so five uh, not five two comes out right five twos come out as a single two right and then what's left inside the radical is two so this is the fifth root of two so if you're solving for this or simplifying this on the outside you got two okay in here i'm going to leave enough room to fill in whatever we need whatever's left over and we had a two left over, right? And then what you do, you take care of the rest, okay? If you're looking for five of a kind, x to the power of six means you got six x's, right? So let's just do, do it for this one so you see. The fifth root of x to the power of six, this is the fifth root of one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six x's multiplied together. So take five of them, and you can bring them out as a single x, right? So this becomes x comes out, and you got an x left over and st still inside. So over here, you go x, and you got an x left here, okay? You ask yourself, y to the power of seven, how many y's is that? That's seven y's. You're looking for five of a kind. You can bring five of a kind out as a single y, right? So five of these y's come out, become one y, and there's two y's left so this is y squared right here let's add a uh, m to the power of 23 so you see how this works as well this is z to the power of 10 right so there's 10 z's right how many groups of five are there in 10 z's there's two groups of five so z to the power of two so basically if you want to think about it this is like saying the fifth root of z to the power of 10 and like we said this goes in the denominator in the power right so this becomes z to the power of 10 over 5 10 divided by 5 is 2 so the whole thing comes out so z squared comes out you got two groups of z's five z's together okay so we took care of the top the top's done no more z's left inside right then you can do the bottom nine is three times three there's no groups of five to be had. So nine stays in the bottom. W to the power of five. We got five W's. Well, we can bring five of a kind out as one. So it's just W in the bottom. Q to the seven. That's like Y to the seven. Five Q's come out as a single Q. And you got Q squared left. And you got M to the 23. How many times does five go into 23? That's what you're really doing, right? How many groups of five are there in 23? There's four, right? So 23 divided by five is four. M to the power of four, and you've got three left over. M to the power of three. This guy, simplified as this guy. Looks more complicated, but it's not, okay? It's easier to deal with to a certain degree, depending on what you're doing, right? But that's what you can do. So this is something that you have to know how to do in grade. In my part of the world, by the, by the end of grade 10, going into grade 11, you have to know how to do this, okay? Ideally, in grade 9, you should know how to do this. This is something I teach my students in grade 9. If I'm working with them, I teach them grade 10 stuff if I can, if they're receptive to it, right? What else? What else? Let's do...
Let's do, let's do, let's do. What else should we do? What have I been doing with my students? What have I been doing with my students? Let me take a little bit of tahini, a spoonful of tahini. Okay. Fun. And this one is with honey. Tahini and honey mixed together. Very good. Power food. Okay. So, let's see. What other mathematics should we do? Mm. Let's do translations. Here's something I'm going to show you if you're dealing with translating functions. Okay. It's something that they really don't teach the way I do it in school here. So whenever I get a student and I show them this method, they're like, oh my God, that's so much easier. <laughs> I know, I don't know why they don't teach it that way, right? So let's assume we have the following function, right? f of x is equal to negative two, square root of x minus one plus four, okay? This is again, a radical function. So what you do is, you start off with your base function, okay? Your base function for this is this. f of x is equal to square root of x. That's your base function. It's like saying f of x is equal to x squared is your most basic quadratic function. Or saying f of x is equal to x is one of your most basic linear functions, right? And these are certain types of functions that you have to recognize. Okay, it's good to know, right? This line is this, okay? This line or this function is this, right? This function is this, it's the base function, right? So you can create a table for this, for this value, and that's what you do. And once you're doing this, once you're embedded in this, it's the easiest way to do this. So you're gonna go here, let's call this Let's call the top one h of x, right? So we don't want to get confused by things, by the terminology. So let's say this is h of x. Oops. h of x, right? So let's put, get some points for f of x, right? So you go make a table, x, and you go f of x, right? And plug in values for x. When x is 0, square root of 0 is 0. So when x is 0, f of x is 0. When x is one, square root of one is one, right? One and one. I'm not gonna do two, I'm not gonna do three, I'm gonna pick four. So I'm looking for, I'm gonna plug in values for x where I can take the perfect square root of it, right? It's a perfect square. So if you put in four here, when x is four here, square root of four is two. It's plus or minus two, but because we're talking about it as a function, we're not gonna, We're not looking for the bottom guys, right? So basically what we're doing is graphing this thing, right? We're going, plug in x is equal to zero, we get y is equal to zero. Plug in x is equal to one, one. We get y is equal to positive or negative one. Square root of one is plus or minus one, right? So we also get this, where this is one and that's negative one. But because we gave this notation f of x, it means it's a function. So vertical line test has to apply so we arbitrarily decide to keep the positive aspect of it, okay? If we wanted to keep the negative, we would have made this negative, okay? And then I plug in four and you get two, right? So that's all we're doing. We're finding points on this graph, okay? We'll do one more. Nine squared of nine is three. That's good enough for now, okay? Now, if they ask you, so the the question is this. Here, let me erase these guys so you don't get confused. So the question is this. If they ask you to graph this thing, start off with this, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to do what this equation, this function is telling you to do to this because this is derived from this, okay? This number here means multiply the f of x by that number. So you take these guys and multiply them by negative two, all of these. So you get zero 
or negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. This number here means it's the opposite. It's x minus 1. So it's not subtracting 1 from the x's. It's the, whatever you do to the x's in the function, you do the opposite in the table. So you're actually adding 1 to this. So plus 1 to all of these. 1, 2, 5, 10. Okay. This one is affecting the y, and it means add 4 to these guys. So this becomes plus 4. So that becomes 4, 2, 0, negative 2. The points that we graph in our original function, which were 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 4, and 2, and uh, 9, and 3, those these guys, right, have become these guys. So all we're going to do is just plot these points and graph it. Okay, so let's do it. 1 and 4. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 and 2. 2 and 2. 5 and 0. 2, 3, 4, 5 and 0. 10 and negative 2. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and negative 2. So we took a function that looked like this, and now it looks like this. Right? And you can do this with all functions given to you. You can have a core function, and then just find the points for the core function, the basic function, and then do whatever you're being told to do based on the sentence, really, in mathematics, which is an equation, a function. right? So these are the rules that you have to apply to this and you get your function and you can do this for any type of function. That's the way I teach my students how to graph functions. May they be trig, trig, log, exponential, log, whatever they may be. Okay. Which is fun to do. And once you learn this method, this system, it, you can apply it everywhere. Okay. You can apply it everywhere. It's pretty cool. What else should we do? What else should we do? We're doing power math. <laughs> oh, fun. What else should we do? 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 Binomial theorem? Should we do binomial theorem? Let's do binomial theorem. Should we? Oh, binomial theorem. Mm, should we do binomial theorem? No, binomial theorem, we need a little bit more space to do binomial theorem. Uh, let's see. Unless we have a specific question. Uh, what else should we do? More tahini. We should eat more tahini. Let's eat more tahini. Look at that deliciousness. Huh? This is amazing. If you cut up apples, I use apples as a dip for this and eat it with apples. Oh, so good. And of course with bread dried like flat bread like pita bread and stuff so good and kick it back with water so good let's take it kick it back with tea and water for sure too but with tea is amazing okay what else should we do um, so we've been covering a lot of graphing functions we just did one uh, solving we can do synthetic division should we do synthetic division sure let's find the x-intercepts for a polynomial polynomial function or should we graph a radical let's graph a radical function okay let's assume you have this f of x is equal to x plus 1 over um, x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay. There's a certain process you have to go through to be able to graph these things. Okay. First thing you do, you find your restrictions. So you're going to go restrictions. 
I always do it on the side. Restrictions in mathematics, the only true real restriction we have, we can't divide by zero. So you take the denominator and you say the denominator can't equal zero. So you're going to go x squared plus 4x plus 3 cannot equal zero. And you factor this thing, cannot equal zero. x, x plus 3 plus 1. So x cannot equal negative 3 or negative 1. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We're just factoring this as a simple trinomial, right? Let me write it a little clear. X, X plus 3 plus 1 cannot equal 0, right? Two numbers that multiply to give you 3, add to give you 4, right? Multiply to give you 3, add to give you 4. So X cannot equal negative 3 and negative 1. And then when you've done this, you found your restrictions, like literally, these are your restrictions. Whatever happens to this function, x cannot equal negative 3 or negative 1. Because in the original statement, that would make the denominator 0, and we can't divide by 0. And then what you do, so step number 1 is find your restrictions. Step number 2 is factor the original polynomial. So this becomes x plus 1 over x plus 3, x plus 1. The next step is reduce. So if you're reducing this, x plus 1 kills x plus 1. So this becomes 1 over x plus 3. Okay. If you end up killing anything, if it reduces, then what you ended up reducing becomes a hole in the function, in the graph. Okay. So this guy here, this negative 1, is really a hold at x is equal to negative 1. Now, if you're graphing this on a Cartesian coordinate system, let's put it here. Okay. <clears throat> and as soon as you find your hole, what you need to do is start putting your restrictions on the graph so you know what things are going to start looking like, right? So if anything cancels, it's a hole. And what it means is there's a point on the on the graph where you can't have an X or a Y. <coughs> Speaking too fast. You can't have an X or a Y value there, right? So we found the X, but we need to find the Y. And this is our reduced function now, right? So you need to find the y associated with this x. So all you're going to do is find f of negative 1. So you plug in negative 1 for x. So this becomes 1 over negative 1 plus 3. So the y, f of negative 1, f of negative 1 is 1 over 4. So at x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 4. This is a coordinate system, negative 1 and a quarter you have a hole. So here's negative 1. Let's say that's negative 1. And here's negative 1 here. So here we have a hole. The function comes up to that point and leaves that point, but cannot be that point. Okay. Now, once we found the hole, now we look back at our asymptotes restrictions. We've got to find our vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes now vertical asymptotes are any x's that haven't become holes that haven't killed each other and we've got x cannot equal negative 3 so we have an asymptote vertical asymptote that x is equal to negative 3 so 2 3 okay I should probably graph this a little bit over so I'm going to erase this I'm going to move it over a little bit so we see it. we get a better representation so let's bring this over so we had negative 1 and negative 1 and we had a hole here negative 1 and a quarter here's negative 2 here's negative 3 and we have an asymptote here vertical asymptote that means the function cannot touch this point or cross this point we'll go across it or touch it right so we found our vertical asymptote. It's just whatever the x couldn't be that didn't cancel in the simplifying process, reducing process. 
Then we have to find our horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes. Okay. Now there's a rule to find your horizontal asymptotes. I'm just going to write it here. Horizontal asymptotes is this. If you have a function f of x where you have a x to the power of n plus whatever it is divided by b x to the power of n plus whatever it is. Okay. There's three things that can happen. If the power up top n is greater than m, if the power up top is greater than the power in the bottom for the x's, then there are no horizontal asymptotes. No horizontal asymptotes. Okay. If n, the power up top for a function, is equal to the power in the bottom of the function, then the horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote is y is equal to a over b. Okay? So it would be a line wherever this is. Right? And if the power up top is less than the power in the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote is y is equal to zero. Okay? So for our case here, the power in the bottom on the x is more than the power up top because then the power up top is x to the power of zero really that's how we get our one right so the power in the bottom is bigger than the power up top which is this situation so we have a horizontal asymptote as y is equal to zero so there's a horizontal asymptote here okay i hope that makes sense i'm going through the speedy gonzalez this is more like a review if you got a final coming up right and when I do this with my students, if there's any questions they have, we go over it, right? So horizontal asymptote, we got y is equal to zero. That's this guy here. Now we can graph this thing, right? We have one zone, two zones, three zones, four zone, right? Now for us, if you have your function is up here, it can't be here because it wouldn't be a function. The vertical line test doesn't hold. And if the function is up here, it can't be here. And if it's here, it can't be there. Now we know the function is down here. How do we know that? Because there's a hole there. So the function has to touch the hole and come out of the hole. So the graph of this most likely looks like this, right? But what we can do is plug in x is equal to zero to see what y is gonna be if you want another point, right? So if you plug in, this is negative two, and this is a hole, it's not zero, this is negative one, right? If you plug in x is equal to 0, which puts you on the y-intercept, then it's one-third. So we know the point is there. And you usually want to get close to the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes, or vertical asymptotes anyway. Okay. So plug in negative 2 here. 1 divided by negative 2. So we're trying to find f of negative 2. That's going to be 1 over negative 2 plus 3, which is going to be 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. So when x is negative 2, y is, uh, what? Wait a second, negative 2 plus, did I make a mistake here? Oh, I made a mistake here, check this out. <laughs> this one is negative 1 and a quarter, the hole is up here, and this guy is not down there, it's going to be up top, right? So the hole is up here, that's negative 1, that's negative 2. If you plug in zero, it's a third, so it's here. And if you plug in negative two, you're at one, which is here. Okay? So we know the graph does this. And this is where my students usually would correct me, by the way. Right? So this guy goes like this, goes like this, goes like this. Okay? So we've graphed what this function, this top function, looks like on this side of the asymptote right and then what you need to do is graph this side now this is at negative 3 right so you can plug in negative 4 to see if the function is up here or up here below the x-axis or above the x-axis so let's plug in negative 4 f of negative 4 is going to be 1 over negative 4 plus 3 which is going to be 1 over negative 1 which is negative 1 so when well, x is negative 4 y is negative 1 it's here so we know the graph does this, okay? And this guy is the graph of that guy. And this would be more grade 11, grade 12 in my part of the world, 
Okay. They're fun to do these graphs. I actually like, uh, really appreciate doing these things. Uh, they're, they use a lot of the things that you've learned over the years to apply to a function to be able to graph it. Okay. Fun to do. Fun to do. Uh, what else should we do? What else should we do? Bup, 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 bup. Um, let's graph inverse of a polynomial function where we don't know the equation of the function, but we know what it looks like, right? Let's do this. this. Let's do this. Let's assume we have the following function. Right? Graphically, we have this. Okay. Straight up polynomial function, easy. Uh, here, let's make it, uh, yeah, let's take it up a notch. Let's go, do, 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 do. let's kick it up here. Kick it up a little bit. Let's assume it goes up like this. Okay. Let's put this at negative one. Let's put this at one. Okay. And these points here are your x-intercept for this function. Now we don't know what the graph of this function looks like, right? Or what the equation of this function is right now, because I haven't given you any points on this. Right? Let's call this f of x. What if I said I want you to graph the following function? I want you to graph h of x, h of x, where h of x is 1 over f of x. Okay. That's what we want to graph. Now, what that means is you're taking a reciprocal function, flipping it. And what you have to appreciate is f of x is really your y. So this is your graphing f of x versus x, right? So your x positions are the same but your y positions change, y values change. So if we graph this thing, let's draw another thing. Let's draw a graph which mirrors this thing. So if this is your y value, right, the function, this is where y is equal to zero, right? And if we take h of x is equal to one over f of x, Wherever f of x is 0, because this is f of x is 0, f of x is 1, f of x is 2, f of x is negative 1, right? Wherever f of x is 0, if you go 1 over 0, we get an asymptote, vertical asymptote. So at this point, we have a vertical asymptote. 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 And at that point, we have a vertical asymptote. As for the horizontal asymptote, the same rule applies as before. The power up top is less than the power in the bottom, right? The power up top is 1, the bottom is, this is at least, minimum, at least, x to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So the power in the bottom is bigger than the power up top, so you got a horizontal asymptote as y is equal to 0. Now there's one other point, one other type of point you have to put on here. Wherever y is one, wherever y is one, here and here and here and here and here and here. So wherever y is one or negative one, the point stays exactly where it is in the flip version. Because if y is one, you flip you put 1 over 1, it's 1. If y is negative 1, then 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So these are called invariant points. They don't change when you change the function around, when you generate the new function. So here, this point, let's mark these up. 1 and negative 1. So this point, this point, stay where they are. This point stays where it is. We got that point stays where it is. We got that point stays where it is. 
right? Now we can graph this thing. Asymptotes act like magnets. They push a function away. So if you have a function coming in, if you have, if you have, <laughs> if you have an asymptote and you got a function approaching it, it can't hit this function, right? Now it could do this and go down on the function, or it can go asymptotic with a function like this, right? It can't go through it, right? And it can't touch it and bounce back because it wouldn't be a function. And it can't touch it, period, right? So when you have an asymptote, when you have a function approaching it, it can do this or do this, or sometimes it comes across and does a little dip and goes back up or goes up and it comes back down, okay? Our function is pretty generic, pretty simple. And we have a horizontal function, right? So for example, if you have if you have this vertical asymptote and you've got a function approaching it, and you've got another horizontal asymptote, which is perpendicular to this, then you know the function is not gonna go down because it can't cross this horizontal asymptote, right? So for example, we know that this point and this point are the same. So we know the function goes through that point. Now the function is not gonna go up because there's an asymptote here. It's not just gonna go straight vertically outward because there's an asymptote there. So these asymptotes act like magnets, right? They push it this way and they push it down. So the graph of this guy is gonna look like this, this part of it, okay? Over here, these guys, anything on this side goes up and anything above the one value is below the one value here right so for example if you had this two three four if this point was the y part of it was four we don't know what the x part is because i haven't put any scales on it right if the y part was four then one over four would be a quarter because we're flipping the y's really what we're doing whatever the point here is is x and f of x f of x is your y so if the original function the y was 4 then h of x is 1 over 4 so that point the vertex becomes a quarter so it's over here that's a half that's a quarter so it's right there so the graph does this it goes up it goes up and so on and so forth right over here the graph would do this wherever that x intercept is over here we didn't do anything over here oh check this out now the one value is here but those are less than one anything less than one you flip it it becomes greater than one so the graph of that one is going to look like so for example let me give you a point here let's assume the y value was here we don't know what the x is i haven't given you a scale but i have given you a scale on the y right so let's assume that was a half right well one over a half is two Right? So this becomes two, or negative two, negative two, right? So it becomes negative two, and you know the function does this, okay? And this guy here does this, okay? And that guy there would do this. So we just graph the reciprocal function for this, which is pretty cool, which is pretty cool, right? And this applies in trig as well, right? When you got the sine versus the cosecant, or the cos versus the secant, or the tangent versus the cotangent, and whatnot. Fun. They can give you the reciprocal function and ask you to drive the original function. Right? They can give you a function like this and give you a whole bunch of points and ask you to come up with the equation of the function. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of things that can be done. A whole bunch of things that can be done. What else should we do? What else should we do? I've been talking like mad. Going crazy. I like it. We got about half an hour left. What other mathematics should we do? Let me think about this for a second. What have we got going on? What have we got going on? 
Mm. What's some of the stuff that we're doing? There's some basic stuff that we're doing. Uh, some great uh, ten. What do we mean, great ten? I got some great ten students that I'm working with right now. So, uh, great ten is a lot of quadratics, a lot of factoring, uh, complex trinomial, simple trinomial, quadratic formula. Uh, you find areas of things. Uh, you can do your special triangles, trigonometry. So, for example, one of the tricks that we're doing is this, right? Uh, your special triangles. Like, I went through a little bit of sessions with a couple of students where I was trying to explain to them where the special triangles come in, right? And special triangles, you know, if you're doing trig, I explain to people that, okay. If you're studying trigonometry, the main reason or one of the main reasons you're studying trig is because you want to understand a circle, right? So in general, when you're trying to understand something, you try to break it down into smaller and smaller pieces, right? So let's draw a circle. And let's assume we want to analyze the circle, okay? And the reason we want to analyze circles is because they represent the perfect cyclic function. We've talked about this. There's a whole trigonometry playlist that we have and random trig videos that we have, right? So if you want to analyze this, first thing you do, you put on a coordinate system because you need points, right? So you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. You got your X and Y. So every point on this circle has an X and a Y associated with it. X and a Y associated with it right and once you put it on a coordinate system you've simplified this thing by a power of four or by four right because if you had a circle by itself you have to analyze the circle all everywhere but once you break it down to four quadrants then if you know what's happening here that means you also know what's happening here what's happening here and what's happening there because it's just a reflection of it mirror Right? So it's a, the, the problem is a quarter of what it was if it was a whole circle. Okay. And then what you do, you break things down even further, right? So what you can do with this quarter, because this is 90 degrees, cut it into 45 degrees, right? And if this has a coordinate system, X and a Y, you draw your right angle triangle the x value is the distance here, and the y value is the distance there, right? So all of a sudden, you're taking a quadrant. We're doing some unit circle stuff. Basically, yeah, Jacob. Hey, guys. <laughs> How are you doing? So basically, what you're doing is you're breaking this quadrant down to semicircles, 45 degrees special triangles, right? So you have one special triangle, which is 45, 45, this. And the ratio of the sides, right, is 1, 1, root 2. This holds for any triangle that has a sides, that's on a uh, Euclidean geometry flat surface, right? 45, 90, 45, right? So if I give you a triangle, and I say this is 45, and you know this is going to be 45 because of some of the angles and the triangles are equal to 180, right? And if I said this is 13, and I want you to find x and y, all you got to do is say, oh, these are similar triangles. That means the proportions are the same, right? It's, it's like taking you, if you happen to be 6 feet tall, and your arm is 3 feet long, right? And making a bigger version of you that is 12 feet tall and saying hey how long is your arm right if you're 12 feet tall right we multiply you by a factor of two so all you got to do now is go oh okay this is proportionality you would say six over six is related to 12 so six over 12 has to be equal to three over x and you cross multiply six x is equal to uh 36 and divide by uh, divide by six so you get x is equal to six so your arm is going to be six feet tall if you're going to be 12 feet tall if you want to keep everything proportional right that's exactly what you're doing with the triangles they have the same ratio they have the same angles 
that means the ratio of the size has to be consistent has to be the same so all you do for this is go oh if you want to find x and y you're going to go 1 over 13 1 over 13 has to be the same as uh, 1 over y has to be the same as root 2 over x right? and then you can solve for this you combine these two guys cross multiply so y is equal to 13 so this is y is equal to 13 and you combine this guy and that guy so you got 1 over 13 is equal to root 2 over x cross multiply so x is equal to x is equal to 13 root 2 yeah that's all you're doing proportional right so that's one special triangle you have the other special triangle you have where they teach you there's more special triangles of course right you can take a quadrant and break it into three parts right because 90 divides by 3 30 degrees right so this would be 30 degrees and here is 30 here is 30 so you have a 30 degree that's 90 that becomes 60 and you also have a 60 degree and a 30 degree so all you really need to learn is 30 60 90 and the ratio of the sides is 1 square root of 3 and 2 that's where you get your special triangles from you're breaking a circle quadrants or circle into smaller and smaller pieces now there's nothing stopping you from creating a circle or creating a special triangle which is 10 degrees 10 by 80 by 90 all you would do is say hey I want to break this into a certain number of pieces where this is into nine pieces so I'm going to make these 10 degrees each right so this becomes 10 10 10 10 10 10 so you're going to have these triangles so if you create another special triangle 10 90 and 80 so your special triangle would be 10 90 80 or 10 80 90 whatever you want to call it right I don't know what the ratios of the sides would be right but we could figure it out okay we could definitely figure it out this is rare you don't do you don't do special triangles of 10 80 90 okay wolf Alexander wolf he cho long time youtube follower here first time catching you live on twitch love your stuff you got well do brother well do thanks or sister or sister right thanks man i love the little symbols you got twitch unity bleep purple bleep purple and a heart and a heart purple purple heart and of course the happy face i love the happy face All right so that's where your special triangles are really originating from why we have them and they come in handy yeah. and you can take this we've taken this far in trigonometry a lot more to come thank you for being here by the way on this stream fun to do by the way I'll, I'll let you guys know I'm not sure what the deal is but uh, I had twitch contact me right let's see how many people are here okay I'll let you guys know I had I got an email from twitch uh from one of their reps saying they've noticed that i've been doing political streams we hit their radar pretty damn fast we've been doing political streams something that we're going to do tomorrow at 7 30 a.m right we've been doing political streams and they mentioned that twitch is trying to expand their library or the services they provide beyond gaming so they wanted to talk to some people who've been doing different types of streams um, one of them being political so they wanted to talk to me so <laughs> i said sure i'll talk to you guys so i think next week i'm going to be uh either skyping or hangout google hangouts or i don't know if twitch has or discord might have a i think discord does have a video thing i haven't done it yet on discord hell yes political streams yeah tomorrow morning 10 a.m at 7 30 a.m right but uh so twitch was interested in uh, the political streams that we've been doing uh glad you agreed yeah for sure i'll, I'll talk to them uh i, I think maybe uh, they're legit they they do want to expand their uh, 
their library what they're promoting because that's the direction it's going it's not just going to be gaming it's going to be live everything uh, what I'm doing right now with the math live streams in coming years is going to become more and more prevalent hopefully on more platforms where there'll be a lot of people providing a lot of help for mathematics to many many people who need the help right because it's pretty important for us to teach people mathematics it's already lots of different stuff yeah for sure Dante so I think they're they're interested in that uh, and I mentioned this uh, sent uh, sent their email to a friend of mine and my friend is is, is a little cynical I guess it's not cynical it's not the right word very um, funny and uh, more cautious and they said oh chicho they just want to find out if you're radicalizing people on twitch and stuff and i'm like i just started laughing hopefully they're not concerned about the politics the content that we've been doing i hope not it would suck if we get kicked off of twitch but it is what it is right absolutely we've been branching out to try to support other categories video games are great but we want to include all interesting topics 100 percent agreed 100 percent agreed that's what we need we need the dialogue the discourse to be opened up for people to participate and create content there's going to be live streams of stuff coming up that we, we didn't even imagine people would be live streaming that stuff right right now there's you know i've been trying to convince a friend of mine and he is in the process of trying to get his stuff together and do it but I've been trying to convince a, a friend of mine to come on Twitch. Diversity is the key, 100%. Trying to convince a friend of mine to come on Twitch and start doing teaching Tai Chi, right? I learned a little bit of Tai Chi from him to do Tai Chi meditation and teach the Tai Chi techniques and Bagua and Qigong and stuff like this. And I've told him I'll help him out. And once he's ready, we'll probably start off by streaming some of that stuff on our channel here. And set a set set something up for him as well and try to get you know people subbing to him and start doing things right but for sure it'd be amazing to have you know i'm pretty sure there is already a live yogas and live everything but we need more of that more of that and definitely we need more mathematics much much more mathematics and sciences and stuff right so i'll let you guys know how it goes the conversation goes with twitch um, if it ends up happening um, most likely next week uh, I'm gonna be talking with them I possibly I told them that I'm really busy right now with students so my window of opportunity is uh, very limited hello barbarian yeah there are definitely there definitely is on site already need more need more much much more much much more gaming is amazing but uh, I think it needs to expand beyond that really there's many things in life to appreciate not just gaming this time I didn't get a little notice from twitch saying drink water no oh, well hello barbarian is this your first time here hope you're enjoying the math stream we're keeping it chill definitely so we've been going for about an hour and 45 minutes or so it doesn't seem like there was too many math uh, people interested in mathematics today sometimes we're getting a lot of mathematics <laughs> blue wave <laughs> I just you thought jazz I just noticed your blue wave thing fun Chicho when is the next stream next stream had out tomorrow morning 7 30 a.m everyone acing their exams apparently Dante <laughs> where my students aren't well I'm trying to get them to ace it but usually I'm uh, actually I do have students that do very 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 well right I've had students that are you know they're getting 100% on stuff right uh, but in general uh, once I start working with students they stop paying attention in class because it takes class two weeks to teach him something that i can teach him in half an hour right <laughs> i'll be there you'll be here on it that awesome awesome i wish the streams were longer than two uh, we'll get into it at some point we will for sure i've been doing uh, uh 
uh, taking care of the plants as well taking cuttings and we fixed up our patio so in the summer we'll be doing streams in the patio a little bit okay taking care of plants and just chilling in the patio and catching some sun and talking we got grapes growing on our patio and uh, a couple of days ago i set up strings so they're going to come towards the the house and maybe create a canopy for us outdoor streams love it yeah yeah i want to do some outdoor streams there are many gifted students whose problem is that they can't pay attention 100 percent one dante 100 percent are you married chicho no no i don't believe in the institution of marriage i i don't i believe in uh i'm monogamous i i have partner uh and i don't believe uh, it's not my thing you know i'm okay with it people want to do maybe at some point i will <laughs> i don't think so but maybe <laughs> but i do have a partner i believe in relationships growing the relationships and stuff but i don't believe in signing pieces of paper to allow governments churches centralized institutions to be the gatekeepers of your relationships uh, i think that's just mainly for tax purposes the pace of the class is too slow too slow they get bored out of their minds or the presentation is too boring as well but in general in my opinion too slow we're dumbing down the kids we're dumbing them down to a level which is detrimental detrimental to the well-being of of all of us globally really we need to start feeding information to the youth harder faster and connecting everything i love baseball stuff i i should start looking into i know soccer stats to a certain degree but soccer the stats in soccer are nothing compared to the baseball stats at some point i'm pretty sure we'll tackle baseball's statistics and look at the ratios because that'll directly connect up to what some of the things we've been doing in personal finance and some of the things we will be doing in personal finance and investing in wall street and whatnot uh we will there's so much i got lined up to do right uh just taking my own sweet time well i don't know if my own sweet time we just, i just shot the video for our 700th video that we have a live online right that i'll be editing today and tomorrow hopefully have it out hopefully fingers crossed tomorrow evening latest hopefully by sunday morning if it's not sunday morning then it's going to be a week later so it's going to be very quiet on youtube and bit shoot um, because i won't be loading on any videos because i want it to be the 700 right so i want to take the 700 spot so we'll see hopefully i can get it done next couple of days uh, considering how many students i got to deal with and what i got lined up uh we'll see we'll see uh, it's a comic book haul so you if you've been on the live streams before in the last couple of months you would have seen about more than half of what i'm presenting in that in that video and there's some stuff i picked up that i haven't shown you guys that yet in the live streams okay fun fun i love the comic book hauls it's absolutely fantastic how many hours a day do you tutor it varies there are times where i don't at all but right now it kicks up a little bit not much like compared to what i've done in the past uh, in the past i've had students knocking on my door at random with parents saying my kid needs help i'm like man what are you doing here it's like 9 a.m on a sunday you can't come knock on my door that's like unacceptable right oh come on please please oh my god what so when it reaches that level i cut back i don't give out my number i tell my students don't pass on the word i'm trimming down right right now i'm in the process of kicking back up uh, because I've moved here and I'm getting students here, so the word of mouth is going out. And so it varies, Anna. Really, it varies. There are days I don't do it all. There are days I only do one hour, two hours, right? Uh, but I, I put my heart and soul into it, right? For me, ideally, I don't want to do more than five hours a day. That's 
tiring because you're dealing with because kids teenagers are high intensity high energy right so when they're high energy they and I pay attention to their behavior and stuff so I'm very specialized they really it's very specialized if demand is higher raise the rates a little bit yeah yeah I mean the kicker is I don't want to price certain people out that need the help right I want to be able to maintain my life you know do some of the things that I need to do as a human being to savings and investing and pay my bills and have a little bit of play money and stuff like this um, and I've and I've I've had flexible rates as well there are people that you know I charge a certain rate and then there are people that I know if they're single mothers or they need help I charge them much much lower and sometimes I do pro bono stuff right uh, just because they need it it's good for our society if people learn mathematics right it's it's not as good for my pocketbook or for my sanity but I can do short stints of that um, but I do have to kick things up a little bit I don't like being like blueberry said on the broke level right sports analytics is fascinating they focus much more on pure stats now than ever they have to they should have if you were managing a sports team back in the 60s and 70s and you were applying full-blown stats to your team you would have been world champions for decades right? you would have blown away all the competition if you were just looking at the stats bring in the mathematics i don't know if they did for uh baseball nicholas how are you doing how is life are you still in europe man i think you should be back by now huh? or did you extend for another month <laughs> i hope so man i hope you extend it for two more months enjoy your stay last we heard from you you were in wales with a with a new love which is fantastic which is fantastic i hope that's going well or went well right fun fun i am just on my way home tonight oh you're flying back tonight man safe travels safe travels stay away from the boeing planes <laughs> joking of course but semi-serious right safe travels though brother that was a good trip you were on eh fantastic fantastic i hope it rejuvenated you man and we all need a little bit of rejuvenation a little bit of uh separation from the chaos of our daily lives right billy bean and moneyball yeah moneyball i watched that movie was fantastic change the game forever they use stats and analytics and destroyed other teams with one tenth of the payroll amazing amazing indeed right like the uh, entertainment you can get like if you stop watching blockbuster movies on the same level right stop watching blockbuster movies right watch movies that are low budget that have a script which is amazing those movies blow away the rest by the way is anyone gonna play wow classic on eu i don't know what that is wow world of warcraft craft is that world of warcraft classic on eu eu what's the eu stand for it can't be a european union <laughs> eu must be the platform so uh world of warcraft classic like the map view that you were playing with stuff I love that I played that a lot like I was playing that uh, it's EU region it's EU region it's cool EU servers ah oh, that's cool man just to let you know a World of Warcraft classic back in the day like I can't remember late 90s uh, there were servers that you can join you have to pay per month but I I found cracks and I was going through Cali and we were playing uh, I was playing World of Warcraft using Kali uh, so you didn't have to pay with people all around the world and I have my little cousins would come over and play that I love that uh, the classic World of Warcraft is absolutely brilliant they are re re releasing the vanilla version this summer are you serious that's crazy I didn't know this 
yeah I needed it I am still in contact with the girl but we shall we shall see what comes of it because of distance yeah give me a few weeks bro and you will have a nice little comic fun thanks Nicholas <laughs> awesome and I'm glad it's working out it worked out well with the girl man sometimes it's you know short-term relationships they're what you need they're phenomenal right in the NBA the Warriors were one of the first teams to fully embrace analytics and have won uh, three out of the last four championships because of it now everyone is trying to copy that cool I can't believe it took them this long to embrace it like crazy that shows you the lack of math literacy in our society right we're in 2019 and it's just recently last three four years that NBA and other football leagues are embracing analytics like data insane I would fire there are all that everyone that wasn't using it really how could you not use it and I found out the highest I got in math uh, was English G GCSE great C level now I need to improve for my work good good you got all the tools at disposal uh, wolf to do games your games your crew up uh, with are always the best I saw a movie about a baseball team which won through another that's the that's the money ball I believe Dante forgot what it's called but it was good no money ball was was that baseball or football I think money ball was football which one was the baseball one I, I don't think I've seen the baseball one or was that the baseball one money ball was baseball I think it's not even that complicated to release uh, realize that three points shots are worth more than two point shots <laughs> agreed <laughs> which is crazy and people were people were spending like gazillion dollars for these players superstars that were temperamental and bad for more more morale of the team when they could buy the whole team which was shooting above averages right and win everything basically this concept is the same concept as uh what do you call it uh baseball is money ball okay cool that was a great movie it's the same concept this concept of using analytics is uh, differential combination same thing as jonathan nitsa and the videos we put out if you do chicho and differential accumulation it's the same concept it doesn't make a difference what you're making in the absolute is relative to everybody else chicho differential accumulation i'll i'll give you the main one i think we put out three videos on differential accumulation uh hey where is it differential accumulation Boop. Differential. come on find it for me there we go so this is the last video we put on differential accumulation and it links up with the rest of the stuff too and it was a message that i got from jonathan nitsan he was a person that introduced it uh differential accumulation it's the same concept as that right i hope i linked this right one did i copy the right one yeah if you look at that it's a half an hour video that talks about some of the other two of the other videos we put out and some of the concepts of it right and personal finance talks about it and i can't believe it's taking this long for sports team to include that stuff in their in their uh, in their game really it's crazy fun stuff gang so tomorrow uh at 7 30 a.m we're gonna do current events okay politics economics news whatever whatever you guys want to talk about okay and um, stream after that it's going to be next week there's going to be a little bit delay i'm going to be really busy with my students for about a week and hopefully i'll have the video up by sunday if not it's going to be another week before we get it up got to board now i think oh you're at the gate so got to go folks hope you all had a great stream chicho bro thank you for the advice during my breakup i needed it have a great stream and see you next stream for sure nicholas safe travels brother safe travels okay and welcome back <laughs> okay okay gang thanks for being here we'll call that a stream 
I'll set up for the stream for tomorrow morning at 7 30 a.m. And if I end up talking to um, Twitch regarding political streams and stuff like this, I'll fill you guys in and let you know what the discussion was and where it went to. Okay. Aside from that, hope you have a fantastic, fantastic weekend. Oh, we got a little notice from Twitch saying drink water. We've been streaming for two hours. Thanks, Twitch. We will. We will. Okay, gang. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. And if you can make it, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey, Chicho, what time zone are you in? I'm in uh, Pacific, uh, PDT, Canada, West Coast. Okay, Brown. See you tomorrow morning. Sip some Hennessy tonight for me. <laughs> I don't have Hennessy here, but I'll sip something for you, Hannah. So I can come tomorrow for sure. Thanks. Okay, awesome. See you, Chicho. See you, Dante. Thanks for popping by, Brown. Hope to see you tomorrow. Okay. Have fun, gang. We'll talk later. Bye for now.